I'm Tyler Suters at the 2010 Energy Biz Leadership Forum in Washington, and with me now is the leader of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Chairman Gregory Yatsko. Mr. Chairman, it's great to have you with us, sir. Well, thank you, Tyler. I appreciate being here. Let's begin, first of all, with what has been making news just in recent weeks. That is the award, potentially, of the very first loan guarantee, a long-awaited process. Well, certainly at the uh, NRC, that was something that uh, we watched, as many people did, uh, mm -hmm. to see how that would play out. And for us, the, the focus we have right now is on all those applications that, uh, uh, for new nuclear units and, and making sure that we, we take a look at those and, and review them and make sure that they can meet our high standards for safety and, and for security. Mm -hmm. the, um, the loan guarantee, uh, I think, is certainly um, something that we're looking at to see, to make sure that, that we're taking our priorities and, and, and making sure we're working on those projects that are, are getting the kind of support that uh, that you're seeing certainly from the loan guarantees and other sources. So mm -hmm. if they do get a license from us, then uh, they, they'll have the resources to move forward with construction. As you dig through these COL applications, does the award of this first guarantee, this endorsement from the administration for new reactors, spur you along? Does it change your approach at all? Well, you know, we, we have a great system in this country where we've got uh, a good, solid, independent safety regulator, which is the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So our focus and our, and our priority is, is on safety and, and making sure those applications are, are meeting our high quality, quality standards for safety and, and for security and protection of the environment, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, I would say uh, in, in, in that sense, the loan guarantee doesn't change uh, one way or another. How we, how we go about doing that job. Mm -hmm. Certainly, as we look at all the applications we have out there, if we get into a situation in, uh, in which our resources were, were constrained and we didn't have enough resources to work on all the applications, mm -hmm. I think we'd want to take a look at those projects, sort of getting that kind of support, mm -hmm. and make sure that we put resources to continue our review work on those. Mm -hmm. And in that vein, the private industry does say time and time again, safety is number one. Mm -hmm. However, invariably, the second thing mentioned is the need to streamline this process, to move it faster. What needs to be done? Well, you know, I think for us, uh, we think we have a good process in, in mm -hmm. place. Uh, we think it's, it's a process that came out of some of the challenges we had in the, in the late 80s with, with the overall process of, of licensing and, and ultimately constructing mm -hmm. the current fleet of nuclear reactors that we have. So, you know, as I look at the process, I think first and foremost what, what we really need to do is make sure that those applications we have in front of us right now are good, high quality, that they're following that process that we laid out about 10, well, almost 20 years ago now. Mm -hmm. And if they follow that process, well, I think we're going to have a good, predictable uh, uh, review process that will, again, make sure that we focus on safety, make sure that, that anything that, if it's licensed, is, is going to be safe and, uh, and then will be constructed in, in the right way. Uh, your predecessor as chairman, Dale Klein, uh, spoke to the Senate Energy Committee uh, in his last weeks, I'll say, or months in office, and made two predictions, more or less. One was that plant vote will be the next series of reactors brought online that seems to be coming to fruition. The second was that because our storage issues in the U.S. are sufficient for the next 100 years or so, the issue of a new depository uh, won't hinder new construction. Do you agree with that one as well? Well, I think uh, the commission right now has in front of us some of the, the some of the reviews that we need to do when it comes mm -hmm. to um, to dealing with spent fuel. You know, I said a long time ago when I first well, not a long time, but a couple <laughs> years ago. It seems like a long time ago. Two thousand five. When right I now. came to the commission, that you know, we we know how to deal with spent fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, we've we've been doing that for decades. Uh, most of the plants that are operating out there have. Uh, have been operating for several decades, some even uh, at least 40 years. So all of them have been generating spent fuel for 40 years, and we know how to manage that. We know how to manage it with, with wet storage or in, in dry cast storage. So I think we have a good program in, in the short to certainly medium term mm -hmm. to understand what the safety and, and security implications are for that spent fuel and, and to be able to manage it safely. Uh, final question, Mr. Chairman. Can I ask it for a prediction from you in that uh, is our future in spent fuel in recycling and reprocessing? Well, you know, I think those are the kinds of discussions people are having right now. Mm -hmm. And for us, our focus will be on uh, making sure that if any of those processes are used, that they're done in a way that's, that's safe and ensures, uh, mm -hmm. ensures safety and ensures the protection of the environment. All right, Chairman, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Chairman Gregory Yatsko of the NRC, thank you for being with us. I'm Tyler Suters, and you're watching Clean Skies News.